Hey, what's up, everybody? I am Agnoyologist without the I. Some of you may know me from Reddit. I've been doing colorization work for a couple months now, about two months, and I decided it was time to give sort of a tutorial on how I do portraits, especially because I think that's what I what I want to specialize uh, in doing. So, right, so this is a picture of Grace Kelly that I did yesterday, and uh, so first I'm going to give you uh, a sort of overview on what my layout is here. Uh, I found swatches to be very useful. Um, you can see that you can tab between color and swatches here. Uh, these last, this last row of colors is uh, basically the ones that I use very often. Uh, basically for every portrait I have a number of colors that I use and uh, I load those up and I paint them in but then I can sort of adjust them afterward which is very useful. Okay, so my basic, my very basic uh, method for doing this is uh, a number of soft light layers Basically, every single layer is a soft light layer, but then I have uh, this. I have a couple special layers here, and then some post-processing layers as well. Uh, so basically, the first thing that I that I do with portraits is uh, I apply a uh, a sort of base layer for the skin, and this uh, has two uses. Uh, first, I can uh, um, use this mask to sort of contain all of my other layers, like this layer this layer and I can sort of provide a boundary for them using this first skin base layer. Uh, as well, it, it um, the color represents the subdermal layer uh, and I can combine the subdermal layer with my skin layer to provide uh, whatever I feel the correct skin tone is. And I actually learned a lot of this, as some of you might have already noticed, from uh, Zuzahin's tutorial, uh, which you can find in a number of ways. I think it's the top result on YouTube for a colorization tutorial actually. Um, but what I mean by that is I have a skin base, a skin layer, and a rosy layer, and I believe uh, Zuzahin has sort of uh, developed that whole methodology to this. Uh, so yeah, for this one I started with a skin base layer, and then I immediately added a skin layer. So that provides the basis that I need to uh, sort of gauge all the other colors um, against it. And this is what it looks like without the skin layer. So you can see that it's very basically just the, where the blood is running in the, in the face, uh, but it has nothing to do with uh, the fat layer on top, and the skin sort of takes that role, uh, and without the skin base, it's obviously, it loses a lot of luster, I think. Uh, and rosy is uh, used for, or at least I use it for uh, blush, and it's generally not too noticeable unless uh, you're working with professional portraits like this, in which they actually do put makeup, they put blush on the face. Uh, so it's a lot more noticeable there, but it depends on your subject and who you're working with. Uh, apparently, uh, Grace Kelly did not often use tons of makeup. Uh, I sort of went with a higher makeup uh, deal here, but uh, usually her portraits are a lot more subtle. Um, yep, so remember the most important thing, at least I think the most important thing is that every single part of the image has to be covered by a layer uh, unless it's incredibly whited out like this. Uh, if you leave something if you leave something black and white it will be noticeable. Uh, so even the teeth, of course, the teeth are not perfectly white, although being a celebrity she had very very well taken care of teeth as you can see. And as well uh, the whites of the eyes are not perfectly white. Um, uh, yeah, so let's see here. So here's my teeth layer. This is basically in order of the time that I put them on. So you can sort of see where my thought process is going. I do uh, skin base first, and then skin, and then rosy, and then I add the teeth in, and then lips. And uh, so these five, basically, they give me the basis uh, for what I can sort of tweak and what I can add on later. Uh, so before you, before you work on anything else on the face, make sure that you have this, these five uh, base layers if, if you want to take this method and adopt it. Uh, and what I also found um, working with portraits is that skin on skin shadows, such as this shadow and as well uh, in the nose um, and also below the chin, uh, skin on skin shadows are redder than other kinds of shadows uh, because the light is actually reflected um, off of the skin before it reaches uh, the, the other layer of skin. And uh, this is best explained by thinking about ambient occlusion and subsurface scattering. Uh, I worked with um, I worked with 3D modeling and rendering and animating for a while, uh, a few years back, and that really helped me understand how light travels through uh, through skin and through um, through flesh and everything. 
Uh, and it also helped me understand uh, the way ambient light, such as the, the soft lighting in the studio, uh, does reach those areas. Um, but you can see here that it's, it's redder, but it's also it's not, as, uh, it's not as opaque. It's not as saturated. Uh, so I decreased the saturation, but I also added uh, redness in there. But uh, usually for outdoor shots, you don't see that that often because the ambient light is often very powerful because it comes from a, a 360 degree area, which is the sky, um, and uh, as well as sun. But you don't see that in studio portraits as much. Uh, and then these next three, next two layers uh, are some extra uh, makeup that I put on a concealer for the nose. Uh, I was told that the the nose was a little red, and that usually. Uh, for studio shots, uh, they put concealer on the nose to sort of make it match the tone of the rest of the face. And uh, I also put some eyeshadow on, but I was also told that Grace Kelly specifically did not have uh, very uh, stark eyeshadow. It's very uh, minimal. And uh, let's see, eyeshadow, concealer, highlights. This is important. Highlights, uh, you can see that I have them on the nose and I have them uh, up here at the top of the hair and uh, where the hair is bright. Basically, where anything is washed out, I always add uh, uh, a counter to the rest of the tone, uh, which means that if this, for some reason, was blue, uh, my highlight would be some sort of orange or some sort of yellow. But in this case, um, the skin is, is reddish-orange, so the highlight is going to be a sort of cyan. Uh, and this is uh, also used for uh, any shadows that aren't skin on skin. So the shadow that, uh, for instance, is uh, bounded by the hat is going to have uh, some of that blueness in it too because it isn't the light isn't reflected uh, between uh, sort of layers of skin. Uh, all right, and then I usually have two layers for hair. One is for eyebrows and one is for the actual top of the head. And this is because uh, eyebrows are generally darker and more saturated than uh, hair in other areas. And as well, uh, this lower layer includes uh, these as well. Uh, yep, so you see, I actually took the time this time to go in and paint in a lot of individual hairs. And because this is such a large portrait, uh, I wanted to make sure that that it wasn't just sort of a, a chalked in effect. I'm sure that it did use some sort of chalk, but it was definitely wasn't noticeable uh, in this portrait. Um, and yeah, I used the, the selection that I made for the skin base to uh, provide a boundary for the hair. Um, so I don't have to worry about uh, over painting this area here. It does it automatically um, using the selection. And you can control click on the layer mask uh, in order to achieve that. And Control shift i uh, inverts your selection, so instead of painting only on the inside, you'd be painting only on the outside. Uh, yep, and Control d uh, deletes the selection. All right, so you see here I have my uh, eye white layer. It's not very noticeable, but it is there. I have it set at 21% opacity, and it's also not a very uh, saturated color in the first place. Uh, and then I have redness in the eyes, that's very important. Um, there's always tiny little blood vessels and, and as well some thing over there that's always, it's, a, it's always a pretty saturated red compared to the rest of the, uh, the eye. And uh, I don't know why I called this eye 22, but you see what that is. Oh, and that's a, just an additional red for that area. It's very, there are a lot of um, capillaries at the, at the surface of the skin, uh, especially in the areas very close to the eye, such as uh, this right here. Along there is often very pale and red uh, compared with the rest of the skin, which is orange. Uh, and let's see, the iris, I decided to go into a lot of detail with the eyes in this one. Uh, so I just have a base layer for the blue, but I also, uh, I painted in, I painted in uh, the actual variants in the color in the iris. There often is uh, a lot of difference. Even in blue eyes, there's a lot of uh, green and brown near the center. I'll duplicate this for you so you can see what I've sort of done here. And I did this in a, a separate job just so that I could use this uh, again and again. But I always have to change it for each individual one. Uh, and I actually have the same layer for both of them, but I applied a blur 
a Gaussian blur to uh, this one. Uh, let's see if this. Yep. So I think I. I'm happy with the way the eyes turned out. I'm not usually uh, too great at that area. Um, I did the same thing with the, the lips. This is a very, very uh, dramatic uh, lipstick, but uh, I thought it was sort of a personal choice. Uh, let's see if I can find this. So I painted uh, a very glossy, um, very sparkly lipstick. Uh, and I put it at soft light as well. Um, I tried using color mode, but I felt that it really didn't bring out the right vibe. I work a lot off of vibe. There isn't too much technicality to what to the method that I learned. Basically, I just sort of go with it. Um, yep, so then I have a curves layer, and that's to sort of uh, brighten the whole thing up. In this case, uh, you can see what that looks like. I just wanted to, I wanted to bring out the midtones a little more, so that it looked more like a publicity shot. Um, and as well, I have a vibrance layer. Uh, this is mainly because I can't get my display to work right. I'm working on a double display, um, and it's a TV. It's not a monitor. Uh, it's mainly we mainly use it for movies. So there's a lot of saturation problems with it that I can't really get right. Uh, so I usually just sort of counter that with uh, the vibrance differences that I need. Uh, I usually have to increase it. Um, yep, here's the original, and there's the finished product. What is this? Saturation. I think I used that to decrease saturation here. That's not really necessary. It's kind of an afterthought. Uh, yep, so this is Grace Kelly. I hope I gave you some of the um, basics uh, to work with portraits. Um, I'm sure a lot of you will sort of find differences in the way you want to do it and the way I want to do it, and that's totally rational. Uh, I don't suppose that mine is the go-to way because basically every single color that colorizer that I've met has a has a very different uh, method. Uh, this is actually a relatively simple one in terms of the number of layers that I have. I worked with one that had 60 or more different layers. I'm a sucker for detail. I always I try to to put a lot of detail in the background, especially. Um, so for outdoor shots, I I usually have 40 to 50 layers. That slows down my computer. I've got a puny little computer, but generally it's, it's all right. Uh, I'm working with a Bamboo Create tablet. Um, looks like this. Uh, it's about $170 at Best Buy, and you can price match. That's how I got a decent discount off of it. Uh, I recommend it very highly, uh, especially if you're serious uh, in doing work like this. Or any, any Photoshop work in general is greatly aided by this Wacom tablet. Uh, I'm using the most recent uh, update of Photoshop. I think it's called CC, Creative Cloud. I haven't used any of the Creative Cloud uh, tools yet. I don't even know what they are, but I'm looking into it. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I've never done a tutorial for anything before, uh, so I hope I did an alright job. Uh, if you'd like me to explain anything, I'll put some annotations in the video, uh, sort of pointing out any uh, anything that I forgot to mention. Uh, all right, Agnoyal just out.